What GitHub has done is beyond any kind of reasonable expectations that we might have. And it turns out it's the way it's been for a while. It's just that people started noticing on their security page. They just basically tout the platform and how security is and how they care about privacy and security and safety by design. This is really funny because we're about to see something crazy. And what's interesting is that GitLab, which some people consider GitHub's alternative because it came out a couple years later, but they do have some extra features that GitHub does not have. And they also don't have this huge flaw. And I would call it a flaw. They call it a design feature, but you decide for yourself. Let's say we go to the OpenAI GitHub organization and uh, this one looks good. Whisper. GitHub has this feature called fork. So does GitLab. What happens when you click fork is you can create your own copy of this repository. Create fork. Now, what I just said to you seems to be reasonable, right? But that's not what actually happens. It does not create a copy. So this right here is now under my account whisper and it says forked from blah, 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 open AI whisper. Now let's say I want to modify this and work on this a little bit. I can clone this locally, make modifications, but I can also just do it in the browser here and do the same thing. I can do commits. So let's say if I go to uh, edit this file, for example, maybe my project that I'm working on uses the open AI API and I create um, a secret key. There it is. There's my secret key and I'm making some notes in the documentation or even in the code. Let's go to uh, my secret key and there's my secret OpenAI API key and I'm gonna commit this change updated code, commit directly to the branch, commit changes. Now, if you're doing this from the web UI, you're gonna get this message, which is smart, right? Secret scanning found an open AI API key. And it gives you uh, options like, oh, one of the options is I'll fix this later. <laughs> You won't fix this later. You'll never fix this. Let me show you why. Allow secret. Okay, secret allowed. Now you can commit the changes. By the way, they detected an open AI API key. What if it's an API key to your own local server or a service that's out that they don't have pattern matching for, right? All right, you get the idea. They might not always detect this open AI API key. Now I've just made a commit to this repository, which is my own copy of the repository from OpenAI. So if you go out here and you take a look at the commits, there's the whole list of all the commits and there's mine. I can click on view commit details and in the URL, you'll see that it's under my repository, whisper commit, and there's the commit hash. I can copy the commit hash. And if I go back to the original repository, the OpenAI whisper repository, and I say slash commit and that hash, there's my commit. It's accessible through the OpenAI original repository right there. There's my secret in plain sight. And you don't even need all these hashes. You can just do six numbers or uh, even four numbers. <laughs> there it is Four, not numbers, but four characters. This is a base 16 and you get the secret and you're thinking, oh, well, that's that's fine. Just delete the branch. You made a mistake. You can fix it later, right? So let's go back to my copy of this and I say, oh, I shouldn't have committed that key. That's a that's a mistake that should not be in there. But how do I get rid of it? You know what? Just to be on the safe side, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to delete this repository. I don't want that out there at all. Yes, I want to delete the repository. Yes, I understand. I'm going to delete this repository. Confirm. I'm going to go into my mobile app. I'm going to type in the digits and approve it. Come on, come on, delete it before anybody else sees it. <sighs> well, thank goodness. Crisis averted. But wait a minute. If we go back to the original OpenAI Whisper repository and we go to that commit URL, it's still there. Your copy of the repository is gone, but your commits are not. Your commits are part of that entire tree. It's a tree structure with the original repository being at the root of the tree and everything else that forks off of it makes copies, but not really. All the history is still there. Wow, that is a problem. Now my key is there forever until I go and talk to Sam Altman to delete this repository. Sam, come on. I accidentally put my key into a commit here. Can you please just delete your repository? Go f yourself, Alex. Yeah. Now this key is here forever. And you might say, well, Alex, who cares? Nobody's ever going to find that hash. First of all, this hash right here is probably one of the first things that's going to be searched if you brute force this. There's only four characters that's required. 
And if you start from zero, 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 you're only gonna need to try 16 things before you get here. <laughs> okay, forget brute forcing. This information is now completely public and accessible and queryable by anybody. There's a little site called ghrchive.org and this site makes all events on GitHub available. So if you're committing code, if you're pushing, if you're doing a merge or pull request, all that stuff is recorded. There's uh, all these different event types that they record and publish, but that's not the only way to get it. I'll show you a different way too. So let's say you want activity for today. You just go to this URL and download a gzip file. All you got to do is just change this to the right date. Let's say today is the uh, August 5th and um, you want uh, the hour also. These are chunked by the hour. There it is. The file is being downloaded. It's 118 megabytes. Unzip it. It's a JSON file. We can open it up and look, these are all the events that happen on GitHub during that hour. These are not all the events, okay? There's only 215,000 lines here. I'll show you how to get more events, but there's enough events here that you can look through here and see if there's any keys that have been committed. And not only that, but there's commit hashes right there. Original commit ID, there's usernames here, and there's repository names here. So you don't necessarily always have to guess at the hash. You can always download it, but that's still kind of hard. You have to look through all these files. You have to know when something happened. You can write a script to automate downloading all this stuff and then search through it yourself, but you don't have to because all this stuff is available through BigQuery. You create a Google Cloud account, which is free to create. You create a project, which is free to create. You know, what the hell, let's do it. Here's my Google Cloud console. I can create a new project. GH actions, blah, 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 whatever. Create, select the project, run a query in BigQuery. BigQuery API, let's enable it. Now, create a new query. Now here's where you're gonna write a SQL query that's going to go against a publicly available API. So I'm gonna paste in something I already kinda know, cause I already tried this. For example, this here is my repository, repo.name, and this is going to select the commit hashes from GitHub archive day. And in this case, you don't need an hour, you need the whole day. Here's 2024, let's go with uh, 0804, stuff I did yesterday. My username, you don't have to have that in there. The repo name, you don't have to have that in there. Let's run this. Okay, nothing came up for yesterday, even though I did have a commit yesterday. Not sure why, but I know I had some more commits on this day. So here they are. Here are my commits, my commit messages, and the commit hashes. This is all public. So this is not good. Now, what about uh, GitLab, who is kind of a, a clone of GitHub, but not really, because they have their own features. Well, I found this uh, open repository called Inkscape, and I created a fork of it. There's my commit, and let's say I added a secret there, right? Now, what happens if I go to Inkscape with that same commit hash? Oops, git resource not found. This is a better design implementation, in my opinion. Why should you be able to see a commit that was done to a fork of your repository in the original source repository? You shouldn't, you shouldn't have to be able to see that. So clearly when I delete my own repository, my own fork of this, you're not gonna be able to access the details of it through the original repository, which is ridiculous. Now, one thing that GitHub does when it detects actual keys that it recognizes, this is not gonna work everywhere, but at least it's something, is it not only notifies you that a key has been detected and where it's been detected, it notifies the source of the key, which is OpenAI. So here it sent me an email saying, you messed up, you put a key in there, and then it notified OpenAI. And OpenAI says, we have determined that your OpenAI key was leaked and have disabled it immediately. That is very cool. So GitHub allows you to shoot yourself in the foot, but then it quickly puts a bandage on and sews up your wound for free. And yeah, when I try to revoke my API key, it says secret key not found. If I refresh this page on OpenAI platform, nothing there, good. Now this was originally found by Joe Leon from Truffle Security, and there's a whole blog post on this. I'll link to this down below. It goes through all the different issues that you might have, including private repos. Yeah, there's a similar problem with private repos as well. Joe Leon submitted the findings to GitHub via their VDP program, whatever that means. But GitHub says, thanks for the submission. This is an intentional design decision and is working as expected. So basically, it's the good old Steve Jobs, you're holding it wrong defense. Unbelievable. 
They need to fix this. Come on. This is not something they can leave up. GitLab manages to handle this right. You can do it too, GitHub. Especially now that you're not just open source, you're going to have a bunch of enterprises using your product. They need to know about this and they probably don't. Hopefully you're going to be aware of this now and cover your butts. Now there's probably a way to do a pre-commit hook in your code so that this doesn't happen, so that there's scans for possible API keys that you might have left in there and doesn't let you commit the code. But I may leave that for another video. Let me know if you want to see that and I'll see you next time.